Hello, welcome Shupao to my community. I wish you well in your uh, in your endeavor for this uh, community uh, presentation. presentation. <laughs> yeah. Now I will bring you to this is the front yard. We will go to the side, to the back, and enjoy all the junks. Hi. Ako si Carlito Arlegi, isang Filipino na 73 years old, mat matagal ng retired, nakatira sa Montreal. Ito. Uh, what, do you, what do you grow? I grow tomato, tomato, kung tomato. what you will call it. <laughs> uh, ang favorite kong uh, okra. I love okra. Oh, yeah, okra is very really nice. Kasi nga, pakuluan mo lang, sausaw sa bagoong. Oh, ang sarap. <laughs> so, I love it. Hi, my name is uh, Rosabel Cesar Darwan. I am 43 years old. I, I am currently living here in uh, Montreal, Quebec, Canada. I am from Manila, Philippines, and uh, I'm a mother of three children. I am currently uh, working as an educator here in Montreal. What were some of the reasons that encouraged you to leave the Philippines? To have a good life, number one, is like uh, because there in the Philippines, I don't have really a good work. Mm -hmm. And then also um, to change the path like w w where I used to uh, live, you know, mm -hmm. and also to give a good uh, life for my daughter, Abby. I had no intention to leave Philippines, you know, I love Philippines. I don't see if it's unfortunate or fortunate that my brother sponsored me, you know. And it was actually it was accidental because when they went to the embassy, or not embassy, in the immigration department, they were only planning to petition my sister's sister. But somehow my brother asked the guy, "Can I also sponsor my brother?" And apparently the the interior told him, "You can sponsor the whole barangay if you want to." <laughs> So he just put my name, that's it. And lo and behold, <laughs> in six months, I was here. My mom used to live here. So I have no choice. Like, and also we have some relatives here in Montreal. Yeah. So she told you to come here? Yeah. When I was like in the Philippines, she told me like, you know what? Because they, she used to call me Nene. You know what, Nene? Uh, why don't you go to study a uh, caregiving course? I was like, okay, why? Because I want you to come here, you know, I feel like I'm getting old. I cannot support you anymore. And uh, not all my life I could support you. So you need to come here so uh, you could have a good future for your daughter. And I was like, okay, I will go to school. So at the same time, I, uh, I just gave birth to, uh, to my daughter, to my firstborn, Abby. And then at the same time, I went to school to study caregiving course. And then after that, my mom uh, find an employer here to sponsor me to go to the Philippines, you know, mm -hmm. I, to, to, to Canada, <coughs> mm -hmm. to go to, to Canada. And uh, yeah, so today we, I'm going to make pancit. So these are all my ingredients. Like I have onion, garlic, snow peas, celery, carrots shrimp and uh, chicken back then in 2004 they need you to have like a caregiving course and then i was like in a program that like like i need to be a caregiver for two years in a span of three years mm -hmm. like uh for example like in three years you should be working like at least 24 months to one employer when i when i went here i was like uh struggling to find a uh, work well i I was expecting na ano, mayroong trabaho na handa sa akin through my brother. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's true. He, he brought me to the to the company where he works and uh, it's a factory that they were making windows, you know. Windows for the airplane, for the boat. And uh, to me it was a hardly to me I'm not used to labor, you know. Imagine you have to do like do hard work, you know. After six months, I quit. Mm -hmm. I applied for another job. At first, when I arrived here, Shepley next, I have employer right away. 
na yung nag-sponsor sa akin na I will have no trouble finding another employer. Tsaka, syempre, in-expect ko na my mom will be there for me. Di ko naman akalain na after one year, exactly one year, I came here March 13, 2004. She died March 13, 2005. So, it's like we only have like 365 days together. Supposedly, we enjoyed but we didn't because I spent too much time working her and hers too. She worked a lot. You know, I arrived here in the month of May. And apparently for my brother, it was already warm. But the first night I was nakakulubong ako ng ano, ng komot kasi nga it was, for me it was so cold. <laughs> <laughs> so, in-expect ko na she will be there for me to back me up, to show me Montreal. Like, we will have, we will spend so much time together but it didn't happen. Hanggang I met friends. So, we started uh, going out, go fishing on the weekend. Then, uh, I started to meet Filipina girls. And then, yeah, you know, they always invite us for, for dinner. During the weekend, they, they cook good food, you know, Filipino food. Lalo na yung mga Ilocano, awasap ng ulam nila noon. So, I love it, you know. I arrived here in Canada, March 13, 2004. Tapos, syempre, nung dumating ako dito sa Canada, talagang na-culture shock ako. Kasi, syempre, nasanay akong Tagalog lang yung salita ko pagdating dito. Nandun yung may French, may English. Tapos, makikita mo pa with the different diversity ng mga tao, iba-ibang nation. Tapos, nung dumating pa ako dito, there were, uh, no, nag-i-snow yun eh. Malakas yung snow. Tapos, uh, sinundo ako ng mami ko. Tapos, yung employer na dapat mag sponsor sa akin, yun yung nagsundo. Tsaka yung mami ko. So, at one point, tuminto pa kami. Sabi niya, you wanna touch, no? Sabi ko, oh my God, yeah, I would love to. I was too, too excited talaga to touch the snow, literally. Most Filipinos at that time, they were so friendly. They were welcoming. Kasi they always ask, when did you arrive? When did you arrive? That's the first question they ask. Sabi mo, mga five months ago, six months ago. Welcome to Canada. Saan ka nagtrabaho? Ganon. They always ask that thing, you know. Ano bang profession mo? Doktor ka ba? Ganoon. <laughs> Engineer ka ba? Yan ang mga apo namin nung maliliit pa sila. Oh. Mm. How old are they now? Uh, malaki na ito eh. Ito ay... Uh, ito na ata itong lalaki. Ito ay 13. At 12, ano? 11, 13. Ito ay 7. Yan ang ano. Ito ang pinakabunso. Tawag ko sa kanya, Mona Lisa. Look at that. Mon- Mona Lisa picture. March 2005. And uh, at during that time, is like, uh, I, at the same time, my mom was suffering from cancer. Mm-hmm. So, like, uh, I don't have my employer. And then, uh, I'm struggling to find a job. And I'm, and I'm worried about my paper. Like, because if I'm not gonna get the uh, 24 months within the span of three years, they, they might deport me to the Philippines. So I really like work hard to find an employer to sponsor me. Yeah, napakahirap kasi number one, ano, I'm looking for an employer for, for me to have my paper, you know. Number two, my mom is at, in the hospital, lying in the hospital bed, like in palliative care. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I should be there for her, you know? Like, normally, when your your parents are dying, you need to be next to her or something. But me, she told me, like, oh, you you need to find a job. Mag, maganap ka ng work. Don't worry about me. You need to, this is more important. Wag mo kong isipin. When I die, think about Abby. Don't, like, uh, go back to the Philippines like that, you know? You really work hard on that. Nung na-hospital siya, sabi nung doctor, the same, ano, nung after nung matest siya kung ano nangyayari sa kanya. Sabi niya, you know, mommy, you have a stage 4 cancer. Uh, you are like, uh, literally terminal case. Kasi nag-spread na daw all over her body with with us, without us knowing na ganun yung nangyayari sa kanya. Tapos at the same time, wala din akong paper noon. Kasi sabi ko, oh my God, mommy, ano ba itong nangyayari sa atin? That was February, ah. February na in hospital siya, March 13, she died. So, it's like like few weeks lang yung in-spend namin together. Tapos, sabi ng mami ko, alam mo, huwag mong sayangin yung mga panahon na 
ginugol natin para makarating ka rito sa Canada. Sabi niya ganun. Sabi niya, wag mo kong isipin. Talagang until the end, ako pa rin ang iniisip niya yung kapakanan ko, kapakanan ni Abby, ng pamilya ko na sabi niya, mo sayangin. Ako, mamamatay lang ako. Ikaw, ikaw pa rin ang mabubuhay. Sabi niya, ganun. Sabi niya, life is what you make it. Ganun. Sabi niya, ikaw pa rin ang magdi-decide sa life mo. Sabi niya, wag mo kong isipin. Maghanap ka ng employer. Imagine, supposedly, I should be there next to her because she's dying, you know. But I was not there. Talagang kailangan ko maghanap ng employer. Ito, toto, naiyak ako. <laughs> kailangan ko maghanap ng employer at the same time. Um, alam mo yun, there's no time for me to, ano, to grieve. Namatay siya. I need to work on my paper. Alam mo, namatay siya this week. Monday, I work. Like nothing happened. Although I was crying talaga. Can I get this shoe? Involved kami sa Couples for Christ. When we were in Broussard, we have a friend that her mother lives in uh, Chicago. She visited her daughter here in, Mon in Montreal and she brought a cassette tape. Then uh, she lent it to us and we watched it and said, Oh, I like this program. So one day we went to St. Kevin and a guy. I, I asked him, is there any couples for Christ? Said, yes, 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 we, we, have, we, have a, we have a Christian life program going on. So we attended. And that was the, the rest is history. Nung namatay yung mami ko, so everything, uh, may employer na ako. Tapos yung may kaibigan yung mami ko, pangalan niya, Lily Padida. She's in heaven now too. Pero talagang nung namatay yung mami ko, siya yung parang tumay yung mami ko. Kasi nung, ano, nung nung namatay mami ko wala akong kaibigan syempre wala naman akong kabarkada tapos ano may mga kamag-anak ako nandoon nga sila sa ano sa Brusart pero ako dito sa bandang Plamon doon yun yun so doon marami ako na meet ng mga Pilipino nag-help naman sila sa akin may magbibigay pa sa akin ng jacket parang oh Meron akong pinagkalitang jacket dito, yung one-to-one. Sabi ko, oh yeah, for sure. Alam mo yung parang kailangan ko yan. O oh, meron ako sapatos dito. Gusto mo ba? Siyempre sa una, wala kang pera, wala kang... So you accept everything they give. Kaya grateful naman ako sa mga Pilipinong mga tumulong sa akin. Tsaka yung ano. Ayan. Uh, my name is Janawal Kilatan. Um co-owner of Cafe Kuya here in Brossard, uh, suburb of Montreal. I'm 37 years old, second generation Filipino. Uh, my parents immigrated here in the 80s, um, born and raised in Montreal. My parents grew up in Las Piñas, which is south of uh, Manila. And you know, they, they saw how life was there and they wanted to just to offer something different or something, I guess, better um, to their children, which kind of sucks because, you know, when you're Filipino and you think of a better life, why is it that you're leaving the Philippines? Sa Pilipinas, imagine I finish um, psychology, mm -hmm. Bachelor of Science in Psychology, pero di ko naman nakakuha yung field na yun dahil unavailable or puno na, puno na sila or alam mo, hindi ka nila kailangan. So, kailangan mong magtrabaho, hindi yung pinag-aralan mo, kung ano lang yung available. Unlike dito, gusto mong maging teacher, magiging teacher ka. Gusto mong maging ganun, maging somebody, magiging ganun ka. Mm -hmm. Kasi there's a lot of job offer. Mm -hmm. so. MTV Cribs? Yeah, for real. This is the backyard where, the, where all the cars are at? I don't know. Just... <laughs> Back then, you know, you have one parent that works and is the breadwinner. Uh, the other parent Mostly, usually the mom uh, stays at home and you can afford having one parent um, with one income uh, and raise the family. So back then, my dad uh, works full time. And so my mom was one that raise, raises at home. My dad wasn't very vocal about certain things. Very different from when we were growing up. You just have a sandbox uh, where the pool is. Uh, have a big garden in the back. So, you know, it's a good space for us to always play in. And uh, yeah, that, that van is actually my, my, my dad's dad, my Lolo's. Um, 
and it's not running right now. Uh, but we used to, with the family, drive all the way down to Florida, drive to Virginia, you know, so have family trips together. So growing up, the times that I spent with my dad would be when he's working on cars. He uh, works as a um, inspector for airplanes. So he's, you know, he knows engines and everything. So a big part of who I am was being able to help my dad uh, work on cars, working on uh, the vehicles that we have. Even though we didn't have big conversations, that's the reason why we have, I have a motorcycle here, I, I ride a motorcycle. That's the reason why I love cars. There was, there was a relationship without always being vocal or verbal. The way that we're raising our children, I find is a lot more different than how, we, how it was back then. Especially with my, my daughter, um, she's, she's a lot older now. So for me, with her, I'm just that's the person, kind of person I am. I'm very vocal. I'll, I'll share things, I'll share my feelings, I'll share my thoughts with her. And I think that transferred back to her. She's a very vocal uh, child also. She, she likes to speak. My wife also, she, she loves to talk. So I think that's just the culture that we have, the values that we have. So we thought like, oh, my mom is uh, like uh, having so much money. She's, she's rich. Every time I call mommy, I need this, I need that. Like uh, she will really send us money. And not only for me, uh, I have like four more other siblings that's, uh, that uh, she's sending money. We don't have a big house like my parents did. You know, we, we, we can't afford a three, four bedroom house like our parents did on one salary. So, you know, we live in a condo, we don't have that much space. So we tell our parents, stop buying us gifts because we can't fit them in, the, in, our, in our condo. Uh, but for them, they just love giving something physical. When we started, we had our children go into Youth for Christ. And they attended the, the camp for them. They just attended to please us, you know, because they love us. They know that, we know that, and we love them too. Because they are now married, eventually we will invite them to go into Couples for Christ. Because as of now, you know, to have children, it's, you're busy, you know? All the kids have activities. So they don't have time even to go to church. So one habit that my my parents always had with us was, you know, prayer time. Always pray every day. Um, and that's one thing that um, I pass down, we pass down to our children, is we, we have prayer time every day. We pray every day. Um, we're thankful for, for how the day is or about certain things. No, no pressure. Um, from my parents in trying to find a, a career path that they wanted. Um, so I, I know that's not a typical Filipino mindset for a lot of parents. A lot of parents is, you know, be a nurse, be uh, a doctor, be, you know, like it's always very specific because you, you know, we brought you here, uh, we took you out of a bad situation. We wanted you to study here and have better education. That's, that's the problem of most friend we have because they impose what they want to the children but if you only empathize your children you would live happily um, I think for us myself and Phil the reason why we opened the cafe was so that we can take a little of a step back with our current jobs um, and be able to have a little more free time for for our family um, that's one reason why we close at three um, because we want to be able to close early and uh, head home and have time with our family. This Christmas, also because we wanted to decorate the cafe, uh, I asked my dad, hey, can we make, uh, is it okay if we make parole or can you still do that? Can we st still make paroles? Uh, we'd love to have it at the cafe. And my dad's like, yeah, no problem. Just let me know when you need it. Uh, but I asked him, I said, dad or Lolo, I call him Lolo now because, you know, <laughs> uh, just habits from my, my, my daughter as well. Uh, I said, Lolo, can you make sure that Charlie's there with you? My daughter. My daughter's name is Charlie. I said, can you make sure that you make the parole when um, Charlie is at your place? Because I love for, for Charlie to be able to see you make those and make them with you, right? Because those are those are the uh, the memories that I had. And it's great because my dad included my daughter, included Charlie in making the parole. And it's great because like it's things like that where, you know, she she's never been to the Philippines but she knows what being Filipino is, right? She sees it in, in us, she sees it in my, my parents, and she sees it in the small things like this, like making up her own. I love the joy that my kids bring my Lola and Lolo, 
they bring my my, uh, my parents and I share this often with uh, my close friends I share this often with, uh, with my wife um, I see sides of my dad that I didn't see directly myself like I know he's a caring loving man but I see so much joy when he sees my um, he sees my children uh, and to me um, I love that Nothing can stop anybody from doing what they want. You know, like if you put enough time, enough uh, effort into doing certain things, um, you can you can do whatever you want. I sound kind of cliche here. I didn't have an intention to one day open a cafe back then. It was more just, to me, I just had a large interest in coffee and just everything um, about it that I wanted to learn more and more about it. And eventually, um, when myself and Phil, we started talking about it, um, we felt comfortable wanting to open a cafe. Cafe Kuya is a third wave coffee shop. The coffees here are by roasters that are really pushing for uh, quality and sustainability in coffee. Um, sustainability meaning um, we want to make sure that the farms that we source the coffee from, they get paid properly. You know, they get, um, that they're paid for their, their work as well. When, you know, when we were younger, we were kind of afraid to be different, uh, especially because, you know, we're Filipinos, we're going to a French school, uh, no other Filipinos are there. We were trying to find the name uh, for the cafe. And for about, I'd say a week and a half, two weeks, myself and Phil were just like, hey, we got to find something easy for people to remember. When I was younger, my brother, my Kuya, who was two years, two years and a half older than me, uh, he would ask me not to call him Kuya. Those who are Filipino, um, they'll find us, they'll either on Instagram or they'll Google us, Google us and they'll see the name Kuya and right away they'll think, oh, must be a Filipino owned, must be a Filipino cafe. Uh, I'd love to check it out. Kind of sucks to say, but you know, being assimilated or being, you know, we, we didn't want to be different. We just wanted to fit in so that way we can, or, or be, I guess, be more accepted. Just wanted to make sure that it represents us, you know, us as people, us as Filipinos, um, and that's that's why we we chose the name. Well, um, my name is Josh. Uh, um, I'm 21, and I'm an economic student at uh, Concordia University. I was born in uh, Saudi Arabia, and because my my parents met there and I immigrated back uh, to the Philippines. I lived with my uh, my grandma and my aunt. My dad was a truck driver in Saudi Arabia and my mom was a maid here in uh, Montreal. Well, for my mom, I didn't see her until I was 10. So from the ages of, I think five to to 10, I didn't see her. And my dad visited occasionally. I lived in Ilocos, and I also lived in Baguio for a short time. I'm part uh, indigenous, so I'm like Igorot. Uh, and like living in Baguio, I was, you know, I had the privilege to get in touch with, you know, my indigenous uh, side, which was uh, really cool. Some years my parents were doing well financially, some some years they didn't, so they pulled me in and out of um, public and then private schools. I lived in a farm actually, a like leisure farm, where we grew our own food and like my living conditions were like the 50s, just because we didn't have running water. We, you know, we, we had a well and we, you know, like every day we had to fetch water from the well. Yeah, sometimes in the Philippines, I would wake up from the sounds of pigs getting slaughtered. Oh my God, that's so sadistic, it's so dark. No, <laughs> I saw, yeah, like, I, I it just... see the, the roosters. No, the no, 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 it was like... Yeah, at first I was like struggling really because number one, I don't know Montreal, I don't know Canada, I don't know anything, and then I have a hard time 
like relating myself because it's like uh, mostly they talk in French, you know. I didn't know that I had to learn a new language, but um, uh, I thought it was really unfair because I couldn't even speak English at the time. And then now they require us to talk, you know, in a language that I can't even understand or speak. So would you say po, French was never something that stressed you out? Not really. Because mm -hmm. I know most people, mga Francais, when I talk to them in English, they always switch to English. I believe my mother tongue is English. All my thoughts are processed in English. Um, but I'm bilingual that I can, I'm very fluent in French and um, people that I know tell me that I know Tagalog very well or I can speak three, three languages. I'm always honest to them that kati lang Francis kung alam eh sa gym excuse mong Francis sa Trinimiti if you want me to help you you speak to me in English then they will switch into English you know, like in the playground, when I'd talk in, you know, Tagalog, the teachers would come up to us and, and tell us, oh, tu parles parle français, you know, and I thought that was, uh, that was uh, very unfair. And I think even now I harbor a bit of resentment towards the, the language just because I associated that, you know, experience. Oh, I have a funny story about this. <laughs> <laughs> someone, someone gave me a Tagalog book. <laughs> there was a group of older Filipinos, um, very nice titas that were um, co coming here for the first time. Uh, they came back and they gave me a book about um, teach yourself Tagalog. And it's more because um, as much as I can understand Tagalog, speaking it, I always try to practice whenever anyone's here. And so they gave it to me as a little gift so I can practice a little more. Um, so it's good. And I think they're trying to set, set me up with one of their daughters. <laughs> so, so, so they're like, oh yeah, learn Tagalog. And then, you know, I have a niece or... So it's like, all right, cool. Yung anak namin pangalan namin, we were surprised. Nagpa, nagpa ano din siya. Nagpa, nagpa believe sa kaibigan ng Italiano. Na, when he was in high school, one time he called us in Tagalog. What? <laughs> Kasi... Nanatis niya yung mga kabiga niya, talagang trailing well. They speak Italian, English, and French. I'll always identify first as a Filipino, um, then Canadian. Um, but I, I know that for a fact that if I go back to the Philippines, if I try to communicate there, I'm an American. So your kids po, they speak to you guys in English. English. But that doesn't erase yung pagka Pinoy po natin. Uh, no, I don't think so, no. Sometimes I cook uh, certain foods because I'm alone and I overcook, uh, I cook too much, I cook too much food and then I'm not able to eat them. Honestly, after I left, I moved out, I... I thought I was going to go crazy with, you know, eating outside because when I was with my parents, I, I prefer eating outside. But then now I actually prefer to cook at home. Welcoming school uh, pushed me a year behind and that wasn't a problem at the time, like when I was in elementary school, but when I got to high school, it, you know, I didn't like how I was a year behind my peers so I looked for opportunities and I asked my my advisor if, is is there any way I could bump up a grade and she suggested the school in like uh, yeah it's a, in this French neighborhood and then it was yeah it was one of the worst schools that you could uh, you could go to um it's really a pit of a socio-economic disadvantage uh, kids. Dito marami kaming kaibigan nag-rebuild ang mga anak. Dahil diyan nga, ang ina gustong masunod. Kaya ang kawawa ay mga anak hindi nakapagtapos. Nag-asawa na maaga. Lumayas sa bahay. Dito yan ha. Dito, born dito sa Canada. 
you know, I, I had classmates who were, who were, I had a classmate who was a dad, actually, at the age of 16. He had a one-year-old daughter. And then, and then, uh, yeah, I also had a classmate who would brag about how, like, he would, when he gets really upset, he would black out. And then, yeah, once he found himself on top of his uncle, just about to, like, punch him on the face. <laughs> and uh, one thing that I learned from that experience is how, you know, when you try to seek help and to, you know, find better opportunities, they, you know, they just put you somewhere worse than where you were before. So I learned to take uh, control in my, with my own hands, I'd say not rely on other people yeah i came here when i like during the summer and my parents would push me to go out in the park uh when the philippines we didn't have parks so that was a new concept as well si abi nagpunta sa welcome school ganun din na culture shock din siya syempre french na naman english you know pero siya parang ano ba yung nangyayari uh, she was only eight years old but yeah i would refuse to go out because uh, i want to isolate myself because i was too scared and i feel like i was still adjusting automatically because you're asian especially back in the 90s you're chinese i remember for me some people would be like hey jackie chan how ignorant is that interacting with other kids was uh wasn't like I don't know. It wasn't my priority. From different country, pumunta ka na Montreal. Ang ano mo kailangan mo talaga pumunta sa French school. You are not allowed to go to English school. So pagsabak pa lang di Abi, talagang sa French school na siya agad. Like I really wish that I had someone who showed me how. I don't know, to be an immigrant kid. But then a lot of my classmates were immigrants themselves and they didn't really know what to do. CJP I attended. You know, I, I was so used to, you know, be being surrounded with minorities. So a lot of people in different backgrounds and such. But then when I arrived to this school, I was, you know, I was actually a minority. When I graduated and went to Dawson, that's when I found uh, um, a larger Filipino community and I was able to connect with right away uh, or identify with right away. Nobody said anything to me, but I definitely, I definitely, you know, like I definitely stood out and people just consider me as, you know, their Asian classmate. When I speak with my friends that are Filipino, we can re remember certain things that happen when we were kids, and it's easy for us to connect with, with that. Uh, whereas with my friends who aren't Filipino, um, the good thing there is that we're sharing experiences that they didn't know that we had. My mind stays open to all of it, right? Since I have, I can share those experiences in different ways. It makes me a better person because I can see things more than just in one, in one light. How would you define that po, yung term na yun? What makes a Filipino? Montrealer. Pinoy na taga dito po. I, I think if you're a Filipino and you live in Montreal, you're 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 a Filipino Montrealer. Yeah. How is that different to other types of Filipinos? Uh, is it you, the way you talk? Is it the way you? I don't know. Uh, uh, Spalay ko palipayo na mga tao eh. Wala ano. There's no way to define that because to me, um, you're you're here depending on your situation and you should just embrace who you are as a Filipino. Ang hope ko sa mga Filip Filipino community yung sa mga parents na sana they will empathize their children. Tayo mga Pilipino, we need to help each other. There's certain things that our parents did. We understand why they did it. But how do we do things for ourselves now? How do we improve the situation? You know, don't feel too comfortable or else you're not going to grow. Hindi nila sundin ang ugali sa Pilipinas na ikaw ang tatay, ikaw masunod. Ikaw ang nanay, ikaw masunod. Maling-mali talaga yan para sa akin. Same thing as our parents thought, 
How do we make our our kids' lives better? How do we make our children's lives better? I always say itchy bottom, just like you know, just move around and explore, because there's always gonna be like opportunities out there. Don't be toxic. Pag musiraan yung kapwa mo Pilipino, kasi you want to grab her her chance. Parang gusto mong sa yung mapunta yung chance, alam mo yon. Maging happy ka lang, kasi your your turn will come along the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like